Hello everyone, I'm Tim, and today we're going to investigate the ins and outs of the world of Okinawan Karate, specifically the Shorin Ryu and Shorai Ryu styles. Buckle up, because it's going to be a fun, educational, and dare I say, enlightening journey. Let's kick off with Shorin Ryu, one of the major modern Okinawan martial arts and one of the oldest styles of karate. It was named by Shoshin Shibala in 1933, but the system itself is much older. The characters, meaning sparse or scanty, and forest, respectively, are also used in the Chinese and Japanese words for Shaolin. Shorin Ryu combines elements of the traditional Okinawan fighting styles such as Shurite, and Shorin Ryu is characterized by its swift evasion of incoming attacks and direct counterattacks using punches and kicks. What sets Shorin Ryu apart from other styles is its emphasis on intrinsic body dynamics to generate tremendous speed and power. Shorin Ryu is generally characterized by natural breathing, natural, narrow and high stances, and circular rather than direct movements. Shorin Ryu practitioners assert that correct motion, moving quickly to evade violence with fluid movements, and flexible positions are important, and that a solid structure is vital for powerful blocks and strikes. Stances that are too deep generally make body movement difficult. Now, on to Shorin Ryu, which is more focused on the development of the body and prioritizes strength training. Teachers of this style may place greater emphasis on the why of karate techniques rather than the how. Shorei Ryu, one of the two oldest karate styles alongside Shorin Ryu, was developed by Higaona Kanryu in Naha, Okinawa at the end of the 19th century. Shorei Ryu, meaning the style of inspiration, is believed to be derived from the Shoreji Temple, located in either Fujian or Mao Jiulian of Longman Jiangxi. Little is known about its origins, but it was influenced by its early development by Shurite. Kanryu Higashiona initially studied Shurite with Sokon Matsumura and learned Kwanfa from the Chinese Wai Xinjiang, assistant of Xi Zhongjiang. He later traveled to China to perfect his skills, learning many new kata from Fujian, the home of Baia Kwan, and adopting it in his style. The teachings of this temple provided the basis for the Nahate style of Okinawan karate. Following Higaona Kanryo's passing, the style became a purely internal combat style, largely due to the influence of Choki Motobu. Although Motobu Sensei's style is still considered Nahate, it actually had nothing to do with Higashiona. When Motobu became the leader of Shorei Ryu, he began to guide its development in another direction, mainly because he trained with Anko Itosu of the Shurite style, a discipline of the great Sokon Matsumura. The main features of Shorei Ryu include the use of open hands, circular block techniques and kicks to the Gedan lower level area. The style also emphasizes short and hard techniques in close combat, combined with throwing techniques particularly from the Zanshin and Chikodachi stances. Training on the Makiwara is also crucial, as is the handling of Kobudo weapons such as Bo, Tongfa or Sai. Both Shoran Ryu and Shorei Ryu originate from Okinawa, the birthplace of all karate styles in the world. However, differences between the two emerged when Japanese and Okinawan karate merged with their own martial backgrounds and sports influences. Some notable differences include the high natural stances in Okinawan karate and the larger, more exaggerated techniques in Japanese karate. So who were the founders of these two styles? Well, according to Funakoshi, a military officer named Asun was the supporter of the Shorei style, while Waijinjan was a proponent of the Shorin style. It's essential to remember that lineages of karate should not be understood as family trees, as practitioners often studied with multiple masters. Now, in terms of training, Okinawan karate is mostly defensive and focuses on realistic self-defense at close range. Exercises like hojo undo, uh, strength training, makiwara training, striking a padded post, or uh, kaki, uh, pushing hands, play significant roles in Okinawan karate training. So now that you have an overview of Shorin Ryu and Shorei Ryu, rewind if you have to, you might have to be wondering how this ancient knowledge has been preserved and passed down. Well, the answer lies in kata, or forms, which are essentially the DNA of karate techniques. Katakumiwaza, 
or practicing kata with opponents is an essential aspect of Okinawan karate, helping to directly teach practitioners the meaning and application of kata forms. Shorai Ryu is the origin of various kata that would be used in descendant styles like Goju Ryu and others. Modern descendants of Shorai Ryu include styles such as Goju Ryu and Ruai Ryu, with Goju Ryu considered the direct evolution of Shorai Ryu. The Shitoryu style also contains many elements of Shorai Ryu, since Babuni Kenwa was a student of Higaona. Even the Shotokan style contains kata from Shorai Ryu, however it did not get it directly but was passed on to Funakoshi Gichin and his students by Mabuni Kenwa. The Shorai Ryu name, alternatively Goju Shorai Ryu and later Shorai Goju Ryu was also used for the style of karate brought to the United States by Robert Trias. Later Trias used the name Shuri Ryu, although some lineages still use the Shorai Ryu name. This style should not be confused with traditional Shorai Ryu as Trias's karate incorporated elements from Nahate, Shurite and Tomarite among others. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching.